So, Paul, now we have ways of measuring distances, how far away these stars are through like techniques like parallax. We can now measure how bright, how hot, what the spectra of these stars are. And that tells us things like its temperature and luminosity. So how do we put it all together? How do we still figure out hot, far away stars or cool, closer stars, even if they're red? But also this question of evolution, yes. like does a small red star turn into a big blue star or are they different because they've got a different chemical composition? Because we knew looking at our sun previously that our sun has changed phases or will change phases and it changes its brightness, change its size, change its colour. We can't really wait around a few billion years <laughs> and see what they all turn into. Yep. It's like just taking a sudden snapshot. I mean just imagine you took a snapshot of a lot of people. You had to classify them. You're an alien, you've just landed and you see people. It you know, almost I'm... looked like the stars previously, it took me a second. <laughs> So I see some black heads, I see some light heads, I see some blue shirts, I see some red shirts. Yeah, and so you might see small people and big people, yep. children and adults. And that's actually an evolutionary sequence. Small that's people right. turn into big people, but you don't necessarily know it. It could be they're born small and stay small and people ones are born big and stay big. Or they could start big and they can go small. Yes, and you've got, for example, um, males and females, and you might think that uh, males evolve into females, clearly a major step up in the evolutionary spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, generally speaking, this is not an evolutionary, that whatever one is born as one tends to stay as. That's right. Do the light hair people turn into dark hair people or vice versa? Or the people with brown hair turn into people with no hair. But, uh, <laughs> um, so how do you just, and there was the shirt colour turned out to be utterly relevant, that's something that changes on a daily basis, whereas some things like the mass of a person yep. or how many legs they have are long lived. Okay. So how do you disentangle this whole stuff? It's going to be really complicated for people and for stars. So our main tool for sorting this all out is what's called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, named after the two people who first plotted it. And you'll hear a lot about HR diagrams if you do any astronomy. Yeah, this is bread and butter in terms of looking at stars. So the HR diagram, as we call it for short, is a diagram showing on this axis the temperature. Yep and on this axis, the luminosity. Okay. So stars at the top put out a lot of power, pathetic little weedy stars at the bottom. Yep. Now the temperature's the wrong way around. These are the, um, the hot stars on my side and the cool stars on your side. Okay, because originally it was uh, designed so that the blue stars were on the left and the we now know the hot stars are the blue stars and That's the right. red stars are on the right, which are, we now know are the cool stars. So they did it by color originally, and, uh, but it's now temperature backwards. And you can see the scale here. So this end would be maybe 30,000 degrees surface temperature going down to maybe 2,000 yep. degrees on that side. So O stars to M stars. And so these were those really hot stars. They don't show a lot of hydrogen lines. Then we have the ones over here, which start to show those complex molecules. That's right. And here's the luminosity. So this is one solar luminosity. So the sun would be across here, and it's a G-type star, so it'd be sitting about there. So very luckily, the sun equals one sun. And so we use that as a scale to put everything in perspective, because as you've said before previously, when we started to do the measurements of the sun. Yeah, these are all very large numbers. Yeah. So calling it 15 solar luminosities is a lot more sense than 10 to the 27 That's right. watts. And what you could see is there's a very strong pattern here. Yes. You don't get stars all over this diagram. The vast majority of the stars actually sit in a single line, which is called the main sequence that runs along here. So when we were looking at the sun, this was the ma main part of what we now know as hydrogen fusion going on in the center. And when we truncated that sun into the lifetime of a year, it was nine months or so of the entire year. And it's more than that. So most stars sit on the main sequence. So let's talk about this main sequence. Okay. So it goes all the way from very hot stars, O and B stars, there aren't very many, but there are a few up here, yep. all the way down to really pathetic little M stars. Yep. And we can actually show what these different stars look like on scale and to colour. So this is two scale? Two scale, yes. So there's our sun, yep. G-type star. Um, and these are much bluer. Uh, I think these are actual real colours, pastel yeah. colours. Yeah, because you you've warned us before they're not really bright colours and it's not just a function of our rods and cones and our rods not being able to detect it. They're actually just not very bright reds and very dark That's because their spectra, even for the hottest and coldest stars, spread over all the wave. That's right. So while they might have more blue, they'll still have a bit of green yep. and red. And so at one end you get the O stars, which are large, considerably larger than the sun, yep. and somewhat blue because they're so hot. And then you go all the way down to the somewhat red and rather smaller M stars. So the sizes 
don't change a lot, but they change a little bit, but they start to really rapidly change towards this B and really these O type stars. And we can see examples of some of these stars. But first of all, let's look at the main sequence. This diagram here was yep. everything that Gaia measured. Okay. And that's a whole bunch of stars, different ages and compositions. And but what we can do is look at a cluster of stars. Okay. So a cluster of stars is a whole group of stars that were born in the same giant molecular cloud at the same time. So they started at the same point, they started at the same age, so the only difference is going to be mass? Possibly. Um, and so you can look at all these things and plot the main sequence just the stars in one particular cluster. Yep. And now you see it's an incredibly tight correlation. Look at this little green line along here. And again, this is the colour at the bottom. And this is the uh, luminosity. So we have the blue luminous ones and the red less luminous ones. There is a bit of a scatter. There are some ones up around the top. And these yep. are actually binary stars. Oh. So Gaia thinks it's seeing a single star, but in fact it's seeing two stars, and that makes it appear more luminous. Uh, essentially because you're adding two stars together. Yeah, but I'm thinking it's just one. But for the single stars, or the ones where the binary companion is so faint it makes no real difference, you're really seeing an incredibly tight correlation here. So there really is that relation between the brightness and the colour and the temperature. That's right. Uh, and what's going on as you go along the main sequence? What is different? We know the sun starts off at near one and then stays more or less in the same place and then moves off this direction, it doesn't move up and down. Yep. So for the sun at least it doesn't look like evolution. Mm. So what is dif differing? Why are the ones up here different from the ones down there? And actually binary stars give us a bit of a clue about this. Okay. If you get two stars yep. orbiting each other, which actually the vast majority of stars are binaries. So our sun is a little bit unique in that case that it's a single star. Yeah, I mean, well over 50% and maybe 90% of stars are in binary systems. And some are even more than binary. Yes, some are triple systems and quadruple systems yep. and other complicated things like that. But if you have stars in a binary system, you can actually look at how strong the gravity is between them. Okay. And use that to work out how heavy they are. Ah, so you can use gravity as a way to measure its mass. And then use that as a way to see what the difference is between these stars of the same age. Because we know there's going to be about the same age. So now if we go to the main sequence, we can see that actually the difference as you go up and down here is mass. Uh, so these hot O stars are more massive than these cool red M dwarfs. Yes, so this is not an evolution. People early on thought maybe stars started here and moved up That's or right. started here and moved down, but it's not the case. Yep. They stay here for a long time and then go off in some other direction. But in fact, the difference is what, how much mass they were born with. Yes, yeah, so our sun's not going to go up or down. It's going to go in a different direction. So presumably then, maybe all of these other stars are going to go in different directions. 